What's up everybody, this is the Joseph Allen, thanks for tuning in. And hey, Thinking Ideas, this is a video response to your video, uh, simply entitled Christian, in which you basically answer another user's question about how you can call yourself a Christian if you're not in the mainstream or if you don't really accept what most Christians believe, whatever that means. I was really, you know, captured by your video and I really wanted to do a, a video response because especially in this video I think you talk a lot about things that make me really uneasy with this whole idea of, of, of moderate to liberal Christianity, which I guess you would call yourself, you would consider yourself in one of those um, categories. But I would really like to explore that with you. So what I've done is I went through your video a couple of times and I wrote down all of the main points that I wanted to, to talk about. So I will be reading off of the script, and uh, let's get started. Uh, you, you start off your video by answering the basic question of this user that, that asks you, why do you call yourself a Christian, basically? And you use a, a, an analogy of uh, being American, being an American, and you compare it to, to the way that you see your Christianity. But I don't think the analogy works because one is born an American and does not choose one's nationality, at least not when you were born. You can choose to naturalize yourself later in, in life as a conscious decision if you're not born in the United States. But I thought you would argue that someone would take on a nationality when at the same time they disagree with the foundations of that country and of their government. Now, although one can be said to be born a Christian, Eventually, one has to come to the conclusion that, yes, indeed, I agree with the tenets of Christianity. For example, one is an American because one has a document that states that one was, that, that one was born on U.S. soil. That makes you an American of, on paper. But if you don't accept the Constitution, if you disagree with everything the American government stands for, you don't accept the Declaration of Independence, and you want to secede from the Union, in what sense are you still an American? You have the piece of paper, but you've chosen to disown all the ideologies that make up what it actually means to be an American. So, although it works in a way, I also think that it, it, it fails in this sense. I mean, basically the point is that Christianity is a belief system, an ideology that one has to come to accept to really be considered part of that religion, I think. And central to the tenets of Christianity is that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died for our sins and that He is the way to salvation as well as a lot of other beliefs which you might say are less important but which most Christians also hold to. Do you accept the Trinity, for example? I don't know. Okay, then you go on to say that to be a Christian one does not have to agree with other Christians on everything. And I couldn't agree with you more. But see, you're ignoring a massive problem here. Not just regarding your personal beliefs, but those of all other sects of Christianity. None of them agree with each other. Just as you don't agree with them, they don't agree with you, and they don't agree between them. So who's right? How can you be confident in what you believe and know that the others are wrong? On what basis should I accept one interpretation over another? So, okay, next we talk about the creation story never actually happening. And of course I agree, but as a Christian, isn't that also a central tenet of Christianity? Isn't, isn't it a tenet that the purpose of Jesus Christ was to absolve us from original sin? And if you don't accept that Adam and Eve were two literal people, and you accept evolution, which I believe you do, then what was the point of Jesus Christ's death? If there was no Adam and Eve, then there was no original sin, or go, Jesus Christ coming to earth and dying for his sins is pointless. I've heard, I, I can't really cite anything. I know that there are some rebuttals to this from your more liberal point of view, but uh, I mean, I just, the only answer that I've actually ever gotten for this, which actually it just blew my mind, was actually by Stuttering Dave, a user which I'm subscribed to and I like his videos a lot. This was a while back and I asked him, uh, you know, wh what's going on with this? And he said, well, I do believe that Adam and Eve existed. I just believe that they were the first humans that God decided to imbue with souls. So basically humans evolved and then at some point God said, okay, Adam and Eve, you're going to have souls and from here on all your descendants are going to have souls. I mean, I think this is a perfect example of how some theists twist and turn stuff to conform to their beliefs 
to actually it's more like to conform their beliefs to what they actually know to be true about the world and I think it's a it's a major cop out because it's it, the, basically what you're saying is that's just the way God decided to do it you say you don't believe the creation story actually happened and the flood was exaggerated and Sodom and Gomorrah was really just man trying to explain what was going on and attributing it, attributing it to God but what are you saying you're saying that the Bible is written by men trying to explain what's going on and that God basically had nothing to do with it and that puts the Bible on the exact same level as any other mythical text that cannot be trusted basically on anything except as a literary text that has some interesting and not so interesting stuff in it. It has some value and it has some things that are not so nice but um, I mean it, it's nothing more. So then why do you accept what it says about Jesus Christ? And for that matter, if it's not the word of God, how can you be confident that what you believe about God, his qualities, his character, what he wants, is correct? What do you base your understanding of God on? Personal feelings, personal revelation? If a Christian God is real, wouldn't it follow that he would want to reveal himself in some way? Maybe by giving us a book, letting us know what he's like and what he wants, and not letting fallible men write a bunch of stories that have nothing to do with what the actual reality is and if you're not actually following the Bible as the laws and the Word of God and his advice at least then why are you a Christian let me give you a perfect example of this I come from a Jewish family okay now in many ways I'm still Jewish I use a lot of the language that the Jews in Mexico use uh, I, I, I use Yiddish words I still go to Passover dinners I go to Rosh Hashanah, and I mean, I don't go to temple anymore, but I go to, you know, get, get together with a family. So am I entitled to say, well, I disagree with other Jews, I don't believe in God, and everything in the Torah I think is nonsense or written by men, but I still follow some traditions and I can read Hebrew, therefore I, I'm still Jewish. I know it's not exactly the same situation, but I think you get my point with that. It, it, I understand it's hard to, to put a, to actually draw a line and say that from here on you're Christian and from here you know before that you're not a Christian and it's the same with, with, with any religion but it is hard for me to understand how it is that liberals like you like just people that think sort of like you and the ideas that you're putting forward where do you get it from because I really don't think that that you can ignore everything else in the Bible and like you say, just take it as, as, as a whole, especially when you don't accept that most of it or a lot of it, what, what, a lot of what's in it is true and you don't think that God had anything to do with its coming into being. Uh, I don't know. It's, it's, it's tough. It's, 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 it's a tough thing. Now, lastly, just a small point. Um, you say that a lot of the laws are mirrored off the Bible because they're just common sense. But uh, if they're common sense, then doesn't that make the Bible superfluous? If they're common sense, then we don't need the Bible to tell us they're common sense. They're just common sense, period. But anyway, that, that's really not important to this video. I, I guess what I'm saying to wrap this up is that even though I love to see Christians like you who are open-minded and, and critical of their traditions and that are open to dialogue and discussion, I'm sorry to say that, in my opinion, you have zero basis for what you believe. I mean, I know that sounds a bit strong and maybe even condescending, but I just don't know how else to put it. You take these two central beliefs, which could arguably, within the context of Christianity, regarded as facts. You know, you could say, okay, what are the basic facts of Christianity? There's a God, and Jesus Christ is his son, and... Uh, and like I said, you never state that if you accept if, that he's son and he's divine. Um, and based on these two facts, then you start constructing beliefs around that, about who God is, what he wants, what his properties are, what the stories in the Bible mean, why Jesus came to earth, what Christians have to do and how they must behave, what the consequences are, etc. That creates your belief system. Thinking ideas, where do you get your belief system from? Not the, idea, not, not the basic two ideas that there's a God and Jesus Christ is his son. Everything else, everything that surrounds that. I guess that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Thanks, Thinking Ideas. I hope uh, you enjoyed this video and I'll see everybody around.